Chairman of the Board of Governors, Mr. Hari Bhartia, Director Sahai, Members of the Board of Governors, Mr. Savaitya, Faculty Members of IIM Raipur, Distinguished Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen, Media and Students who are graduating today. It's, it's really a great uh, pleasure and honor to be here today at the very first convocation of IIM Raipur. I'm very grateful to the Chairman, Mr. Bhartia, for inviting me on this very special occasion of the very first graduating batch at IIM Raipur. I believe that being part of this batch is a very special meaning for all of you because it's not easy to be the first batch of any of institution and it's really something that we all look forward to. I have seen the value of a startup at uh, many times in my life, once in the when I began in Infosys in 1981, when we were all a very small and young company, we didn't have any infrastructure, all of us were packed in one room, and but we had big dreams and big visions. And again, two, three years back, when we started the unique identity of Third of India, again it was a very much of a startup situation where it was just myself and a couple of my colleagues in one room and starting off on a major project. So I can very well understand how it has been that I am and all of you came here, a very new, ca a very new campus and going through all the challenges and teething troubles of a young institution. So I hope that this experience that you have had will prepare you not only for your career but also to become entrepreneurial because entrepreneurial achievement is often done under such circumstances. Today, I think when you look at the history of IIMs, as you know, the IIMs began in the 60s and then we had all the major expansion. But finally, all the developments of the last 60 years has been about giving access to people of different kinds. In the 50s and the 60s, it was about creating steel mills, dams, and IITs and IIMs. And in fact, the Bilai steel plant came up not very far from here. And then later on, the focus went on individual requirements, Roti Kapra Makan. And then later on in the last 10 years, 20, 15 years back, again the focus was on infrastructure, on Bijli, Sadat, Bani. And in the last 10 years, the focus has been on very basic things like education, health, and jobs. And in some sense, the massive expansion in our education system, our health system, and our jobs has been the focus of the last 10 years. But let me talk to you about something different, which is really digital infrastructure, which is what we all need. And that's what I do today for, a, for as a job, which is to create a form of a digital identity infrastructure. Because we believe that even as we have the physical infrastructure, we also need digital infrastructure for giving access to our people to various kinds of facilities. And when we look at digital infrastructure, we look at three things. We look at identity, we look at communication, and we look at financial services. The identity part of it is done by the unique identification part of India, whose goal is to give a unique ID to every resident of India. Which means that over the next several years, we have to give a unique identity to 1.2 billion people. Now this project was conceived in the government in 2006. I was invited to join the government to execute on this project in 2009. And in September 2010, we rolled out this system by enrolling the first set of people in a place called Nandurbar in Maharashtra. Today, we have enrolled 200 million or 20 crore people. And our goal in the next two, three years is to enroll another 40 crore people, which means that we want to reach 600 million or 60 crore people by 2014. But, thank you. But what is different about this identity program is that it's just, just about giving an identity card. It's about giving an online identity, which you can use online, on the cloud, on the internet, on a smartphone. And that's what makes it different. And the second thing about this identity is the fact that it is about uniqueness. It's about giving every individual only one ID and every individual a different ID. 
For this, we have built a very large computing infrastructure, which is based in Delhi and Bangalore. And we use the science of biometrics, where we capture the 10 fingerprints and the iris of every person to establish a unique digital signature for everyone. And then we compare everybody who enrolls into our system with all the existing people who are there to see whether it's a duplicate or not. And if it's a duplicate, we reject the duplicate. And that's how we ensure uniqueness. So uniqueness is done by biometric deduplication. And then the number which you get, which you get, you know, as a letter which you get the number, the number then becomes not only a paper-based ID, it also becomes an online identity. And we think the online identity, which is unique, is really what makes it very special and very different. Because once you have an online identity, then on the, on the cloud, on the internet, on the phone, you can verify a person's identity. And that's what an online identity does. And we felt that having an online identity is not enough. We have to develop this identity in a way, in a way which in a way which allows people to use this in multiple applications. So not only we provide the online identity, we provide a way to build this as an open application programming interface so that you can embed this in many, many applications. And that's the sort of architecture of this, which allows you to build many, many applications for this identity, which is online. And this could be used in financial services, it could be used in communication, it could be used in healthcare, it could be used in skill development, it could be used in uh, education. So the fact that you can use this as an open platform is really what makes it very different. So our goal is to provide this identity, our goal is to give across about 600 million people with this identity in the first instance, and over time, along with the NPR, get it to the whole population and then make this available as a platform for multiple applications. Now, this is very fundamental and based upon this, we are doing the second part of it, which is working with the financial system, working with the Ministry of Finance, the RBI, the IBA, the banks and all that, is also use this as a platform for financial inclusion. Now, when you, somebody has to open a bank account, they have to prove their identity. That process is called as know your customer. And often for people who don't have an ID, getting a bank account is very difficult. But now the Reserve Bank and the Ministry of Finance has declared the Aadhaar number as a know your customer for a bank account. And therefore using the Aadhaar number as an ID, we are expediting the ability to open a bank account, which means a lot of people who don't have access can open a bank account. And then because the ID is unique, it can be a financial address. In other words, let's say there's a person in a village who has to get a pension. All that the government has to do is say, credit so many rupees to this number, to this other number, and that automatically translates into a bank account and gets credited to the bank account. And therefore, by using the uniqueness property, we're able to use this as an address to which you can credit money. And therefore, you have a platform by which anyone in the country can receive their money directly into the bank accounts electronically in a paperless manner. And the third part of this is using the online verification process. People can withdraw their money anywhere. And that really allows people anywhere in a village to go to a PC and withdraw their money. So using the identity property and using the uniqueness aspect, we have in turn built on this working with our partners, the banks, a platform for giving everybody a bank account. And to us, that is the second leg of this, of this triad. And the third leg, which has been done very successfully by our telecom industry, is to provide mobile phones. As you know, the biggest success in the last 10 years has been the dramatic growth in mobile phones. There are 800, 900 million mobile connections, maybe 6, 700 million unique people with mobile connections. The world's most uh, economical rates for mobiles, you know, the whole concept has flown. In terms of, you know, dams and steel mills, a lot of infrastructure in terms of, 
you know, basic things like uh, your amenities, then we thought of infrastructure as Delhi Sadak Pani, then we thought of infrastructure as education, health and jobs. And now this is one more dimension of infrastructure, which is identity, financial access and communication access. And why this is important is that these three are all in some sense just numbers. Your identity is just a 12 digit number, your mobile number is just a 10 digit number, your bank account number is just a number. All these three are just numbers. But these numbers in some unique way identify you or have access to you. And if you can use these numbers to talk to someone, if you can use these numbers to receive and send money, if you can use these numbers to robustly authenticate yourself on the, on the cloud, then suddenly they become a type of personal infrastructure. And that personal infrastructure, because it is online and because it is all over, essentially is mobile. So you can, if you have these three things, then wherever you are in India, you have access to that. You can go on online and get access to these three things. And therefore, what is the common attribute of these three new infrastructures is A, it's, it's online, B, it's just a number, it's a virtual thing, and C, it is, it is mobile because it, all these three infrastructures travel with you. And that's a very important requirement because as the country is growing, as we have migration, as people are moving around, from north to south, from east to west, from central India to coastal India, they must be able to take their things with them. And having this mobility of the Aadhaar number, the bank account and the mobile number allows you to move along with these three assets. And that's the kind of vision that we have. And we hope to, over the next several years, use this infrastructure to provide all kinds of applications. For example, the government today spends 300,000 crores of individual based either entitlements like pensions and scholarships or subsidies like kerosene, LPG and so forth. And using this new infrastructure which is getting rolled out, all these entitlements and subsidies can be directly given into people's bank accounts. And if you're able to do that with full traceability, with full auditability, then it can have a big impact on our ability to deliver what is meant for people directly to the beneficiary and also by authenticating them at the point of withdrawal of that benefit, making sure that only the genuine people get the benefit and nobody else claims it on their behalf. So just using this to essentially streamline and reform our subsidy and entitlement architecture itself has a huge value for this. But because it is this open platform which allows you to really build applications on top of it. It really allows not only governments but also entities in the outside in the private sector to build applications on, on this platform. And that is what we hope will happen in the coming years. Uh, we have already signed up many of the uh, uh, you know, authentication user agencies who will use this authentication. And we hope to see a lot of innovation which will allow people to get benefits from this infrastructure. So over the next several years, we hope that more and more applications will get built on this platform. And therefore, we feel the reason why this will become sustainable is that once we have, you know, 30, 30 40 crore people who have the number, then many, many applications will come for them. And once more and more applications will come, that even those who have not got a number will now go and get the number because that number gives them access to new applications. So we hope that the, the proliferation of people who have the number will lead to applications and the proliferation of applications and the proliferation of applications will again lead to having getting more people getting the number. And that's how we are trying to use the most modern digital infrastructure to create a, a better world for many, many millions of people. Because problem identity is a very common problem in India with millions of people who don't have an identity. And therefore, by doing this, we are getting them into the society as a form of inclusion. So I think this is really, I think, uh, once again, I want to say that all of you are very, very privileged to be here at IIM Raipur, to be the first graduating batch of IIM Raipur. I think you have a very important role Because you will be the first alumni of IIM Raipur and as you go out, the 
people's view of IIT Raipur will be based on your performance, on your conduct, on your abilities, on your capacity, on your achievements. And therefore, you have a very important role to become the flag banners, the beacons of IIM Raipur and over the next 15-25 years lead the way as successive generations of IIM Raipur citizens come into the world and become very successful in their profession, become very successful in the corporate world, in the government, in becoming entrepreneurs and become a very strong group. And when you come back here as alumni and maybe in three years time they'll come to the new Naya Raipur campus Remember that it is much more fun being in a startup right on day one. Thank you very much.